Howdy y'all, welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to look at some Antiqua tech and today it is the magic lantern that caught the apple of my eye. And we'll be discussing this because not only is it the precursor to the modern day cinema and modern day projector, but it also has no official date of invention or creation. And there's multiple different people and cultures that are attributed with basically discovering this device. Now, the magic lantern essentially is a light tight box. And within this box, there is a lamp or a light. And behind this light is a mirror that is reflecting the light into a tube and at the end of this tube there is a lens and there is also a slide and these slides are made out of glass and the reflected light from the lamp is basically projected through this tube projected through the glass slide and the image appears in front of the magic lantern so these were used within homes they say but they were also used within theaters and they were even used in different circus acts and traveling shows and things of that nature. Now, interestingly, it says, while there's no official date of this invention, they were mostly developed in the 1600s and they were increasingly used in educational systems during the 1800s. Now, I actually discovered this device while I was looking up old tools that the Masons used to not only build with, but also to teach with. And that's where I found some of this information. So just worth noting that. Now they say that the magic lantern was widely in use from the 1700s until the early 1900s when the invention of the slide projector basically put the magic lantern out of use. Now, the Magic Lantern used hand-painted glass slides until the halotype photographic slides were invented in 1848. And they say this was done in Philadelphia by Ernst Wilhelm and Frederick Langenheim. Now, while there's no official creator of the Magic Lantern, they note that Da Vinci, Fontana, and Drebbel all described similar devices throughout their work, but then they quote, no evidence of completed devices exist made by any of these inventors. Now they say the magic lantern is very closely related with the camera obscura. And this camera obscura apparently was known from as early as the fifth century BC and it's been experimented on successfully, according to this narrative, since as early as 1000 AD. And they say the use of a lens and a hole to create an image traces back to as early as 1550. And portable camera obscuras were sold throughout Europe in the 1600s. And this was done by Drebbel himself. So I found that to be vastly interesting. I had never heard exact details about the camera obscura like this, let alone that they were sold basically in bulk throughout the 1600s. And I'm not exactly sure what type of image or photograph that this camera obscura could obtain, but it's really interesting you know, for us to discuss that they had the idea of a portable camera as early as the 15 and 1600s. Now, according to the current narrative, while the history of this magic lantern is really convoluted, they say that Athanasius Kircher in 1645 published a book of his findings and inventions and within this book there was a steganographic mirror projection system which had a focusing lens and text or pictures painted on a concave mirror which reflected sunlight and he said that this was intended for long distance communication so really interesting that the first example of this sort of invention is said to have been created for long distance communication and not for entertainment purposes. Now, in 1654, 
Belgian Andre Tiquette travels from China to Belgium with Martino Martini. And Martini is said to have brought with him and lectured throughout Europe on the Magic Lantern. And Martini claimed that the Magic Lantern was a Chinese invention. But then according to this current narrative, it says there's no evidence of that that exists. Now, this Andre Tiquette met with a man named Christian Hygens. And Hygens would actually become the man who would get the credit for creating the first successful Magic Lantern. And he did this according to the narrative in 1659. Now here's where it gets weird, is while Hygens basically took this information from Tiquet uh, and made his own invention and got the credit for it, it says that Thomas Rasmussen Wagenstein from Gotland met with Christian Hygens and basically adopted the invention as his own and he would travel around Europe producing and selling these magic lanterns and he would try to make them smaller and more practical and he has a lot of credit at least in the European market it says as being the one who brought the magic lantern to the masses there's also a story about him written in 1670 it says Wagenstein projected the image of death in front of the court of King Frederick III of Denmark. And this was done under King Frederick's request. He wanted to see the magic lantern at work. Now it says many in King Frederick's court were shocked and some of them even fainted. But King Frederick basically dismissed it as cowardice and he wanted to show how strong he was. So he asked Wagenstein to project the image of death three more times and then it's written that king frederick died within the same week of this happening so i found that to be really interesting it doesn't really relate to the narrative but it does sort of point to the magic in the magic lantern now like i said before there's many gaps and uncertainties and really a lot of anomalies when we talk about this magic lantern or this first projector that was ever created it says here while all this credit is given to those first two men that I discussed, Germany has magic lanterns as early as the 1600s and maybe even at the turn of the century from the 1500s into the 1600s. And while the first two devices I talked about by Kircher and Tarquet are very similar, this one idea that developed in Germany by a man named Grydell was basically independent and looked completely different from the first two inventions that came from these other men. Johann Franz Grydell was from Nuremberg and it says he invented the horizontal tube magic lantern and after he did this it said Nuremberg became the world leader in magic lantern production. So I found that to be really interesting because Germany at the time was more of a idea. It was more of a group of kingdoms and principalities and different areas that were ruled by different leaders. And it's really interesting all of the different inventions that seem to have stemmed from this area around this time. Not only do we have a lot of Prussian inventions that seem to come when it comes to timekeeping and things of that nature, as well as architecture, we're also now, at least according to this narrative, taking note that the magic lantern may have also began in Germany. Now, this Grydell, who invented the horizontal tube magic lantern in Nuremberg, basically is quoted in his work as crediting Johann Weisel from Augsburg as being the true creator of the magic lantern and the inspiration for not only himself, but also for High Jens. High Jens, who actually, according to the narrative, has the official credit for inventing this magic lantern, actually studied under Weisel in 1653 which is six years before Hygens would publish his work and become the official narrative owner of this creation. Now, this Wiesel, who may be the true creator of this magic lantern, actually lived from the 1500s 
until 1662. For the next hundred years or so, at least according to the current narrative, these magic lanterns were in use and they were in use in homes and theaters. They would have different meetings and areas and people were putting a lot of work into creating artwork for these. Now, the term being in the limelight actually has a lot to do with the magic lantern and it's because the lime light was actually used to power these magic lanterns in later times. Eventually, they found it was much more efficient to basically burn this quote-unquote lime, which would burn much brighter and for much longer. And eventually, these made their way into the magic lantern. And while these were being projected in theaters and onto stages, basically the lime light would be covering up the entire stage. And if you were in the image, or if you were performing on stage, because these were also used in the regular lights as well, you were basically performing within the limelight. So I found that to be very interesting. So we're just gonna take a look at a couple of ads selling these magic lanterns. These are gonna be from the 1800s, you know, the earliest ones that I could find. There wasn't a lot of images of these magic lanterns, from the 1800s while you can see these ads and i can find modern pictures of devices that were built back then i couldn't find that many actual images from the 1800s that were showing these magic lanterns and their usage so i found that to be very interesting also again noting the importance that these devices had to the masons and as well as the education systems around the world basically the whole idea of a projector and the notion that this would somehow change our society was in belief in the 17 and 1800s you can see these images that were depictions of the future from that time period and they show that these magic lanterns on a massive scale are being used to project images into the sky and basically influence the society below so I found that very interesting. It's sort of reminiscent of the modern day bat signal and things of that nature. And I just found it to be kind of similar to our cell phones and how we are right now bombarded with ads and different influences all of the time. It's very remarkable to me and fascinating that back in the 17 and 1800s, they sort of had a pre-notion of this concept coming to fruition. Now, we're going to look at a few more ads of these magic lanterns, and I'm also going to show you a couple of these magic lantern slides, some of the earliest ones, they say, that were done on glass and in color. And they're just really interesting. They seem to depict some esoteric things, and I just thought I would share these with you. So I would love to hear your comments down below about the magic lantern. This is some sort of antiqua tech that is really off the charts for me. Not only does it really set a example for everything to follow it, but it has a lot about it that is still mysterious. So in conclusion, we have this magic lantern, which gave society the ability to project any image that they could create onto any wall with simply the device and a source of light. So whether it be fire or candle or limelight, or in later times, light provided by electricity, this could be used basically to put an image anywhere that an image was desired. Now, this is said to have been developed, this magic lantern, over 200 years before modern photography, and it was first used in major kingdoms before having a sort of trickle-down effect where these devices are said to have been used in nearly every home across the United States in the 1800s, as well as many other different countries. Now, this device, they say, was developed for use in education systems, but we further discuss it and see it being used as a sort of memento more or an own personal family's way to introduce different ideas and concepts to people in their family basically these would be in your house and you could put any story on the wall you could put any tale 
on the wall. And the fact that this seems to predate photography by 200 years or more is fascinating to me. And the idea that these magic lanterns actually had some sort of magic behind them, or they were used as reminders of one's faith and reminders of one's life and what could be and what could not be. It was very interesting that these sort of horror or esoteric themed parties were put on constantly using these quote unquote magic lanterns. So this invention, which we can't really put our finger on exactly when it was created, has so many different ties to so many esoteric creations while also being the precursor for the modern day obsession of TV and cinema, I just thought it was so interesting I had to share it with you. And whether you believe that people were using this for good or for evil, you can definitely see how this was used for optical illusions, how to make people believe in ghosts, and how to influence one another. And I found it to be vastly important, really interesting, and something that I wanted to share with you guys a lot. So please let me know your thoughts and comments down below. I would love to hear anything you have to say about this, and thank you so much for being here.